These are national championship emblems on the side of the Budweiser truck. In his 33 years in unlimited racing, Bernie Little has won 15 of them. Will there be a 16th added to the end of the list? Steve, we are about to find out as the boats now are lining up on the course. And let's check the starting lineup. In lane number one, it'll be Chip Hanauer in the Miss Budweiser, owned by Bernie Little and looking for that 16th national and world title. In lane two, Dave Vilwalk and Pico's American Dream having won two heats, qualify for that. Mark Evans is in Miss Columbia Communications in lane number three. Lane four, Smoke and Joe's with Mark Tate. Mark has his work cut out for him in this finale. Steve David in lane five in the T-plus engine treatment. The pace boat on the outside will be Scott Pierce in the Miss Outrigger. And the trailer boat rounding out the field will be Miss JN Automotive driven by Mike Jones. Now let it be known that the Miss Budweiser in order to win the championship for the season has got to finish this race. Let's watch him as the green flag flies and Miss T-plus takes it on the lead. T-plus in the lead position and right on the inside in lane number four is the Smoke and Joes. Smoke and Joes, Mark Tate, has now taken the lead over the Miss Budweiser and the T-plus. Let's see if he can hold it through the turns. Here's Budweiser coming up. Budweiser takes it as they come out of the turn, but Smoke and Joes right on his hip pocket. Boy, racing from that outside. Mark Tate has his work cut out for him, and let's give credit where credit's due. The Miss Budweiser looks like they're going to go on to a world championship here, but the driver's title went to Mark Tate this year. Mark Tate has done a great job in the Smoking Joes, and right now he's got a big job ahead of him trying to catch that red rocket. But look at how the boats are now bouncing through the water, and that's the Miss Budweiser, who we were commenting on before, was riding so smoothly. The winds are up. The water is a little rougher. Both boats are having to fight it. Look at what's happening here with the Smoking Joes. It looks like Smoking Joes was falling back a little bit. As we look down from our camera, Pico's American Dream has taken over in second place. So it's now Miss Budweiser way out in front. Pico's American Dream in second place. Smoking Joe's has fallen back to third place with T-plus back and forth. Mark Tate giving it all he can and looking at him race up on that right sponsor. He's not getting a very good ride. Our Zodiac lap speed for lap number one for Miss Budweiser. 155 miles per hour. That is absolutely amazing in the water conditions that we see here in Honolulu right now. Pearl Harbor has roughened up. The wind has picked up a little bit. These guys at this point really become more pilot than they do driver because they really have to watch the front end of the boat. Second place, Dave Vilwak, who's been running strong all day long. There you see Dave on the right. Smoking Joe's now back in third place trying to hold on to it. Boy, I'll tell you, what a disappointment for the Smokin' Joe's team. I know Steve Woomer and the entire crew has worked hard to get that boat to absolute prime, but it just hasn't clicked for them today. What would the chances be going into this race, Dick, of the Miss Budweiser and Smokin' and Joe's drawing each other all four heats? That's amazing, and that's where the race has been all day long, and right now it doesn't seem like much of a race as the Miss Budweiser has a clear lead. The Smokin' Joe's now back in third place, trying to catch Pico's American Dream. Meanwhile, Dave Vilwak isn't even concerned about Mark Tate anymore. He's looking ahead at the rooster tail of the Miss Budweiser and trying to catch it up. And the water continues to roughen as the boats turn it up. And look at the ride that Steve David is getting in the T-plus engine treatment. Our second place boat is starting to lose his tail. Pico's American Dream at the stern is starting to come apart. And starting the challenge for that second slot is the Smokin' Joe's. And as uh, we were talking a moment ago about the points lead at this time if the Miss Budweiser breaks Smoke and Joe's would be moving up into second place and take the championship by a mere 29 points but the only chance for that to happen would be if the Miss Budweiser broke down and right now that looks like the furthest thing from anybody's mind that boat is operating beautifully now a boat that's got some problems is in second place the wing is starting to come apart and look at Smoke and Joe's has moved up Smoke and Joe's passes Pico American Dream and now is riding in second place so Mark Tate has found some more speed look at the fire fire is broken out a stack fire aboard the miss outrigger with scott pierce all sorts of action happening all over the course there's the checkered flag for the miss budweiser chip hanauer takes the championship for the season with high points fire is raging on the miss outrigger hotels you can see scotty pierce dive into the water to get off the boat it looks like he drove it close enough in they'll be able to get fire hoses from the shore on the boat in just a moment meanwhile the miss budweiser comes home victorious 
won every race she went in today. There you see them extinguishing the fire aboard the Miss Outrigger Hotels. On the Fruit of the Loom scoreboard, Miss Budweiser first, Smoking Joe's second, Pico third, then the T-plus engine treatment did not finish for Miss Columbia Communications and Miss Outrigger Hotel, and it did not start for the JN Automotive. There you see Mark Evans disappointed. A great day up to this point. Jim? All right, Scotty, I know that you didn't want to start or end the year this way. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, the boat was running better today than it has all year, and uh, Riggers was nice enough to bring us over here, and um, we heard it pretty bad. The boats burn up pretty good, and and um, I'm just I'm thankful I didn't get hurt. I saw the fire, and I came in. The fire rolled up the deck and was rolling to the cockpit, and so it had to be a little concerned. So I can tell you Pearl Harbor's nice still. The water temperature's about 85. I'll come to Hawaii. <laughs> well, you're okay. That's the way it is. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just looking forward to 96 and get some get some more race wins back in my uh, in my column. And I really enjoyed racing this year, and I can't wait to get back. All right, Steve. Ron, Chip, congratulations on the victory here and a come-from-behind win in the 1995 O'Doul's High Points. I think um, Ron and Bernie and myself and the crew remember this one. This is the, the championship that we kept trying to give away, and nobody would take it, and they left the window open for us today, and thanks for Ron and his brilliance, we were able to go through that window. Ronnie, your rough water setup was the difference today. Well, I don't think I've ever seen it this rough, and Chip took a heck of a beating out there, but the Miss Budweiser seemed to go over the top of the stuff really good today. We had a good rough water boat, and I think that's really what won it. But I'd like to say uh, congratulations to this team here. We were down in the dumps four times this winter, summer, and to bring it up here at the last race of the season and, and finally win the championship right here in Honolulu, it's great. Well, here are the final Eagle Snacks O'Doul's unlimited high points for the season. As you can see, Miss Budweiser, the clear winner. We'll be back and have a special interview with our winner and the owner of the Miss Budweiser in just a moment.